Next up, everyone, we have Jake Bernstein. Jake is the publisher of Jake Bernstein Weekly Futures Trading Letter, Bernstein on Stocks, the letter of long-term trends and COT analysis. Jake has written more than 42 books and research studies on futures trading, stock trading, trader psychology, and economic forecasting. Articles by Bernstein have appeared in futures magazines, money makers, stocks, and commodities, Barron's Financial Weekly, Stocks, Futures, and Options magazines, and Farm Futures as well. We are pleased to have Jake join us in our webinar today. So I wanted to thank everyone. You should all be seeing my screen right now. And uh, James, as far as questions are concerned, I like to take questions during the presentation, if that's possible. I yes. can't see the questions. All I can see is my presentation. Is that correct? Okay, what you can do is, you know so the go to meeting box that you have there? Then a right hand side? Correct. One okay. of those subsections there will sh say questions. If you expand it out, they will. You can actually read the questions as they come in live to you. All righty, I see it now. Okay, very good. So thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it, and thanks all for being here. The important thing that I want to tell you today is that I've been given 45 minutes to teach you everything that I've learned in about 45 years of trading, more like 47 years of trading. But I'll try and do the best that I can. So my presentation is going to be a little bit different. I think that the speakers today have done a great job. I really enjoyed what Nigel showed, and Joe has a very fantastic understanding of the options markets. I don't do those things. I, my trading strategy is very different. I am a proponent of 100% rule-based trading, by which I mean that if I need to interpret anything, if I need to analyze anything, if I need to look at different possible outcomes and scenarios and make a judgment call, that doesn't work for me. That doesn't mean it won't work for other people. It simply is not effective for me as a trader because I've lost too much money doing things that particular way. And by the way, sorry for the noise. I'm speaking to you today from my offices in Santa Cruz, California. Beautiful day, except we're near the train tracks and near the highway and there's a lot of noise. So I apologize to you as far as that's concerned. So. Who am I? As uh, Joseph said, James said, I've written about 45 books. I've been trading for nearly 50 years. I trade futures. I trade stocks. I manage my own accounts. I don't do managing any other people's money. I'm not interested in that. I mentor people. I teach people how to trade. I'm a real trader, and I trade practically every day. I trade short term. I trade long term. I day trade. I intermediate term trade. I'll trade anything that moves, provided there is potential profit in it. So why listen to me? I've got a lot of experience, and certainly with a lot of experience, you learn a lot of things. Most of the things that I needed to learn and most of the things that I did learn for the first 15 years that I traded, I had to forget because most of it simply doesn't work for me. So what can I teach you? I can teach you objectivity. I can teach you reality. Besides 100% rule-based trading, I believe that you need to trade as a reality trader, you have, to, you have to admit to reality and you understand reality and you have to always separate what you know from what you don't know. I respectfully submit to you that most of what you think you know as a trader, most of what you think you know from reading books, from attending certain kinds of meetings, most of what you think you know you really don't know, and even the things you think you know which are reality-based, you really don't know what to begin with because they're probabilities. So as long as we're dealing with probabilities, that's the one thing that you need to be aware of. Why am I doing this today? I love my work. I love to come to my office every day. I love to trade. I love to teach people. I love when things come back to me. I've made a lot of money in this business, and at some point when you get to be in your <laughs> late 60s like I am, you realize that there's got to be more to it than just trading. There has to be some form of giving back. So when people write me and they say, Jake, you changed my life for the better. I, I see things that I didn't see before. Things are working for me. That does it for me. So I'm doing this because I enjoy it. And I love my work and I love to give back. So let me talk to you about what I call the trading genie, which is the what if question. What if you knew at any point in time or at every point in time, what to buy or sell. Let me see if I can get my pointer here. Let's see, where are my tools? Um, give control. Um, 
drawing tools menu and let me get my pointer spotlight there's my spotlight so how's that so what if you knew whether to buy or sell what to buy or sell when to buy or sell within two minutes or less exact price to enter and exit and all of these things that are purely objective measures of trading I respectfully submit to you that if you know even half of these things your probability of success is going to be very high so whatever strategy you use or at least for me I can't speak for you I need to know all of this stuff if I know all of this stuff I know that I've tilted the odds in my favor and one of the things that has never ceased to amaze me is that traders continue to lose you would imagine that with all of these incredible tools we've got these days beautiful charts technical indicators fast computers cheap commissions sources of information all over the internet studies analysis etc that the average trader would be winning more than they're losing I have found that not to be true I have found that people generally lose as traders because they lack objectivity and clarity they lack a structured trading model they lack specific entry rules they lack profit maximizing strategies all of which leads to a lack of discipline people say well Joe no wonder you're losing money you don't have discipline oh okay where am I going to get discipline am I going to get discipline from a book is it gonna fall out of a book and all of a sudden I've got discipline am I gonna get it from a pill I'm, are you gonna get discipline from reading my first book the investors quotient no you're not gonna get it from my book discipline comes from confidence the only way you can get confidence is to be successful the only way to be successful is to have profits the only way to have profits is to have structure unless you have profits through sheer dumb luck which is not a good way to trade so discipline comes from confidence if you have discipline with a losing methodology and you continue to have discipline with a losing methodology then you need a psychiatrist because you have confidence in something that ain't working what I want to show you today is at least one strategy that provides all of the statistics that you need in order to be successful whether you can do that strategy or not is entirely up to you because you need sufficient starting capital you need the ability to sit through a series of losses you need to see the big picture and at the same time you need to avoid micromanaging so all of these go into the formula for success and to varying degrees people have it or they don't have it if you can get at least half of these things you will dramatically increase your odds of success so I talked briefly about discipline and I don't want to give you a lecture on psychology but ultimately it boils down to psychology because you can take the best trading strategy in the world and give it to a trader who doesn't fulfill the requirements such as for sufficient starting capital and they will take that great strategy and they will turn it in to a losing proposition and that's that you can take a very average strategy and give it to a trader who has a structure and they can turn that very average strategy into a profitable methodology so the fate of the typical trader is that they lose money because they lack all of those aspects that I just discussed this is a very intricate and intimate relationship between discipline and confidence and you can attend seminar after seminar webinar after webinar and learn fantastic trading tools but they're not going to work if you don't have what it takes to implement them and some of those inputs are sufficient money ability to sit through a series of losses and you won't know any of that unless you know the limitations of your system how many losses would you have to sit through following a particular strategy what has been the historical performance of that methodology how many profits maximum has this particular system taken how many winners in a row how many losers in a row these are ultimately extremely important which is not to say that history will always repeat itself in terms of a track record but at least you know where you're dealing from and what you're dealing with we're going to talk about that a little bit more
So lack of confidence leads to lack of discipline and so forth. So a little more psychology. As I said before, I want to deal in reality. I don't want to sit in front of a computer all day long and look at colored lines and numbers and dots and dashes and find myself interpreting. I don't want to have to compare weekly with monthly with daily with intraday with 30 minute with 5 minute with 10 minute charts. It may work for you. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me because I don't have a logical series of steps to follow. That's the kind of trader I am. So you can call it the difference between systematic rule-based trading and proprietary trading. There's a lot to be said for proprietary trading. So I can only use information that I have if I know that information to be statistically valid or historically valid. So I differentiate between art and trading. I don't do art. I'm not psychic. After all these years, I'm able to talk to a person for five minutes, ten minutes, ask them a series of questions, and I will know with a very high degree of accuracy whether they're going to be a successful trader or not. That's how I screen people that I accept or reject for my one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I only want to deal with winners, so if someone has the potential to be a winner, I'll accept them. If they don't, I'll reject them. No offense intended, but I can't work with someone who's not going to win because I'm not a psychiatrist. So because I'm not psychic, I can't play that interpretation game. Another thing that's important is even the things we think we know, we don't know for certain because we're playing the odds. So if you're immediately going to deal with something that is questionable to begin with and you don't know what you're dealing with, you're, you've got double jeopardy. Example, I can show you trades that historically for the last 60 or 70 or 80 years that have been right 80% of the time. 80% is not 100%. I'm dealing with the odds. It's okay. 80% odds is really good odds. But if someone says to me, buy S&P when the 50-day crosses above the 200-day moving average or the so-called golden cross, what does that mean? If they say to me, here's the track record, that means something to me. If somebody says, buy when there's a doji, what does that mean? How often has a doji been correct? I don't even know what a doji is. I don't use candlesticks. So even the things we think we don't, we know we don't know for certain, and that would be the odds. So why play in the absence of good odds? The thing that's so strange about it is that here where I live, not too far from Silicon Valley, we've got the greatest computer technology in the world. I give local webinars at uh, Meetup Group. We have hundreds of people who come to these meetings who are computer whizzes and geeks and gurus and technology experts and they sit there and they trade things that they can easily back test on their fantastically fast computers and they haven't done it. So even though we have at our fingertips the most powerful weapons that traders and investors have ever had, a lot of people don't use them. So I'm going to give you some examples of myths and lack of reality and you can make your own decision. I'm not here to sell you on anything. I'm simply here to share with you ideas that I've accumulated through the School of Hard Knocks over the course of almost 50 years. Because I didn't have a teacher. I didn't have anyone to show me the Roblox. I didn't have everyone to, anyone to teach me that buying and selling on closing moving averages penetrations is very low accuracy. I did not have access to that computer technology until the 1980s and that's when I started to develop my model. So, number one, typical trader is usually out of the game after two or three consecutive losses. If trader comes in and loses money once, they say, well, I have the ability, I've lost money once. I understand that these methods don't work all the time. And because these methods don't work all the time, I'm dealing with probability. When I'm dealing with probability, I can be wrong once. I understand that. I can take two losses in a row, as most, say most people, because I know it's not a perfect game. When you get to the third consecutive loss following a trading system or method, my estimate is that 20% of the traders drop out. They're not interested in the method anymore. What Jake taught them is no good. Jake's a bum. The method doesn't work. Let's change it. 
four losses in a row, five losses in a row, six losses in a row. After six losses in a row using the same methodology, most people are out of the game. The statistical fact is that even the best trading methodologies will lose six times in a row. So if you're not prepared and you don't know that ahead of time, you're in for a very rough landing. So most traders can't even handle more than three losses in a row. 90% of your money is going to be made on 10% of your trades, which means you will have out of 100 trades a lot of small winners, a lot of small losers, a few bigger winners, a few bigger losers that balance each other off. If you don't get the big trades, you ain't going to make money. So the fact of the matter is that most traders are disorganized. They have too much information. They get too many opinions. And a lot of traders love to visit chat rooms. And guess what? In most chat rooms, it's been my experience since I go there to do a lot of observing, I have found that most traders are there to talk their position, to get comfort for their insecurities, to play games, and to disseminate information to support their positions and associate with other losers. So I say don't visit chat rooms. So here's a list. I'm not going to go through it. I don't want to offend anyone. And I want to stress, this does not mean that these methods are no good for you or some people. They're not good for me. I don't use any of these things with exception of one, and that is this one over here, CNBC Works, if you know how to use it. <laughs> if you read my new book, The Complete Day Trader, Second Edition, I've given some examples in that book of how to use CNBC profitably. And it's not what you think. Using CNBC profitably is a great game, and I explain how to play that game. Most CNBC stuff is over in two to five minutes. It's like bad lovemaking, but if you know how to do it right, hey, it can be pretty rewarding. I'm not going to get into that. These methods don't work for me because they're either statistically not valid on my backtesting, or they require judgment, which is no good for me. So like I said, my judgment when it comes to finding traders that are going to be successful is good. My judgment when it comes to making trades based on judgment is no good. So I can't do that. So now I've told you all the stuff that doesn't work. Let me show you a few more things that don't work. And then I'll show you what one of the things that does work. Now, uh, let me say this also. People have said to me, in all the years that I've been trading, what have I found to be the most profitable indicators? not necessarily in order of preference. They are momentum. If you don't understand momentum as an indicator and how to use it, you're missing out on something really big. Number two, seasonality. Probably one of the most enduring forces in any market for almost any time frame. Number three, cyclical behavior of markets. Number four, the very important commitment in the trader's report. And number five, profit maximizing strategy. Let's take a look at something. Here is a back test, computer back test, not an opinion, computer back test of the 200 day moving average in S&P. So what I did was I took a look at buying S&P when we cross above the 200 day moving average, selling S&P when we cross below the 200 day moving average. Oh, you've heard about this when it's all over the place. They talk about it on CNBC. The reporters there who suddenly become financial experts are very glad to give you their opinion, talking about things they don't know. What do we know? If we backtest the last 72 instances of price crossing above 200-day or below 200-day moving average, we get accuracy of 29%. So if you're doing 29% accuracy, which means you're wrong 70% of the time, well, gee, that's not really good because you're taking eight consecutive losses and you're taking three consecutive profits. And if you're taking eight consecutive losses, your psychology is going to be very bad. And if your psychology is bad, your discipline is bad. If your discipline is bad, you're going to lose money. You're going to lose your self-confidence. If you lose your self-confidence, there goes your trading methodology, no matter how good it is. In addition to that, you might say, well, look, it made money. Indeed, it did make money on the bottom line with 29% 20, accuracy. However, before it made money, it had a drawdown of $82,000. So, you know, if this is the kind of methodology that works for you, more power to you. But for me, 
it doesn't work. So these are some of the relevant statistics that I like to look at because these are not only bottom line financial statistics, but they're also psychological factors which you cannot get away from. So you had 21 winners, 51 losers, you had a big drawdown, the drawdown pretty much knocked people out of the game and all of that stuff. So that's not good. So I say to you, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You say, well, what about moving average for IBM, the same, the same procedure? Well, in IBM, as an individual stock, as opposed to S&P as, a, as a, a major average, we've got 18% accuracy. So that makes the wheels turn. and We'll say, well, okay, then let's do the opposite. Well, guess what? The opposite doesn't work either because you have your stop loss to contend with. So while it may work, you will be stopped out before it's had an opportunity to work because every system has a stop. So I say to you, look at these statistics again, 36 losers, 8 winners, and I say to you very respectfully, no, 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 please don't do it. Now let's compare. I have a little Forex strategy here, computer tested, computer developed, computer developed and tested the right way, by which I mean without overly optimizing all the little parameters. And I will explain to you the strategy in plain and simple English and let you find for yourself if you're pleased with it. And by the way, if you want more information, visit my website, www.jakebernstein.com. I do webinars. I'm a real trader. I trade practically every day. I teach people how to trade and so forth. I'm having a three-day event coming up starting tomorrow where I will show the night before what the trades are for the next day. Then the next day, which would be Monday, I'll show how they turned out and what the trades are for Tuesday. And on Tuesday, I'll show the trades for Wednesday, but not important. Talk about this strategy. 86% accuracy, average of $299 per trade in European currency futures, 21 consecutive winning trades, three consecutive losing trades, average length of trade is about two and a half days in the winners, about five days in the losers. So we have some very clear statistics, a very short-term trading system. The average profit per trade in futures is small. This reflects taking out commissions at slippage. But what's the difference? The difference here is this. You're trading with high accuracy. Why is high accuracy important? High accuracy is important because would you rather be right frequently for smaller amounts of money and have positive psychology and have relatively few consecutive losing trades? Or whether would you rather go for the big trade and have lower accuracy? Because in my view, there are really only two alternatives in trading. The third alternative, high accuracy with large profits, does not happen nearly as often. And that's another thing we know from considerable back testing. And so we look at the statistics. Let's take a look at the basis for this because I want to show you the rules. Let's talk about a few things we know. This methodology is based on the relationship between the opening price and the closing price. We know that the closing price versus the opening price on any given day or on any given price bar, no matter what the time frame is, is very important. Closing above the opening price is bullish. It means there's demand. It is usually predictive of the next day or two. Closing below the opening price on any given day is a negative. There's a candlestick pattern for it. I don't know what it's called. It doesn't matter. So in an uptrend, you will find that most closes are greater than the opening. In a downtrend, you will find that most closes are lower than the opening. And that in and of itself is an excellent little day trade strategy based on an underlying valid concept of market behavior. What else do we know? We know that buying on strength and selling on weakness yields a high percent odds of success. Why? Because when you're buying on strength, you're jumping on a train that's moving in the right direction. When you're trying to bottom fish, buying on weakness, you're buying on, uh, on weakness, you're, you're jumping on a train that's moving back into the station, and sometimes it won't leave the station. But the psychology of it is that most people don't like to buy on strength because they feel like they're going to be a sucker, they're the last person to buy. But what is the fact versus the fiction, the fact versus the reality? Buying breakouts is a good strategy, 
selling breakouts to the downside is a good strategy. So we have two things we're dealing with, closed versus open, buying on strength, selling on weakness. Another thing we know, exiting a trade on the first profitable opening or close after entry is high accuracy. Why? Because you're forcing exit at a profit. What do I mean by first profitable opening? You buy something at price X, it opens at price X plus one, profitable opening. You sell something short at price X, it opens at price X minus one, it's the first profitable opening, or the close relationship, it's the same way. That X could be very big, it could be very small. But when you force exit, you can call it a trick if you want, when you force exit, you are improving, if we force exit at a profit, you're improving your percentage accuracy, and with your percent accuracy being high, it affects your positive psychology. Your positive psychology keeps you disciplined. Your discipline keeps you making trades. If your discipline keeps you making trades, you keep winning if the system is good. If you keep winning with the system that's good, you improve your psychology. If you improve your psychology, you improve your consistency and your discipline, and it goes round and round and round. So, the bottom line, item number four, you can trade for high odds with small but reasonable profits, or you can trade for high profits with low odds, and I've already explained that. So let me show you a track record. Here's a track record. And I, I haven't listened to all the presentations here today, but um, I think it's important to show a track record. If someone's going to show you a strategy, show me a track record. I want to know what I'm in for. I don't want to take anyone's word for it, and I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to look at this yourself because I believe in reality and objectivity. And ladies and gentlemen, it took me 15 years to come to that conclusion because I had no teacher. I had no one to tell me what is right and what is wrong. So here's a track record. It's a very impressive track record of this little strategy that I'm going to show you. And the strategy is very simple, but let's look at the track record. Things are going up, they decline, and they get back on track. Draw down and back on track, draw down and back on track, draw down and back on track, and so forth. So every time this little strategy has had a little drawdown, it's time to get on board. The beautiful thing about drawdown is if you understand the trading system and the trading system has got consistency, you will know that the best time to begin using the trading methodology is when it's had drawdown. The psychology of it is different. Most people want to start using a trading strategy when it's here. They don't want to start using a trading strategy when it's down here. Very, very simple. Very, very simple entirely. So what you want to do is when your strategy, if you've got a good track record, has been declining, that's the time to jump on board. Well, let's look at some more of the strategy. This is the strategy on a month-by-month -month basis. So again, by looking at statistics, looking at the power of the computer, very, very simple. Power of Computer says to me, my best month to start using this strategy is in March. My best month has been in September. My second best month has been in December. And that doesn't go back just a few years. It goes all the way back to 2003. So what's the strategy? It's really, really simple. I'm going to explain the rules to you first. Come back to the rules. Here it is. We know that the day of the week is very important in the currency markets and in many other markets. This strategy is based on the day of the week. I believe in what's called setup, trigger, and follow through. My setup, trigger, and follow through model is very simple. Every day needs a setup. A setup is a pattern. The pattern must have a trigger, and the trigger must have a follow through. So if there's only one thing I can teach you today, it's setup, trigger, and follow through. Setup, trigger, and follow through. And that setup, trigger, and follow through is very simple. Here's the setup. I'm going to come back to the setup. Thursday. If the closing price of euro versus US dollar is higher than the opening price on Thursday, I have a setup to buy the next day, which would be Friday. If the closing price is lower than the opening price, I have a setup to sell the next day. If on Friday, if I have a buy setup and on Friday, I trade X number of pips or ticks above the high of Thursday, I'm a buyer. If I have a sell setup and I trade X number of pips or ticks below the low of Thursday, I'm a seller. It's a completely mechanical objective rule. There's no interpretation. If anything I'm showing you requires interpretation or the terms looks like or could be or might or I could or I would or I should or I might or perhaps or looks like, then there's a problem for me.
because I'm not an artist, I'm not psychic. So consider this, the day of the week is a pattern, the pattern sells on a breakout to the downside, the pattern buys on a breakup to the ups, breakout to the upside after a bullish pattern or a bearish pattern. So it's incorporating what we know. Day of the week is important, there are patterns in day of the week. Breakouts to the upside is important, we know that. Breakouts to the downside are important, we know that. And we also know that the close less than open, close greater than open is important. We also know that exit on first profitable opening or first profitable close is important. So we're incorporating elements for which we know there are valid statistics. And because of that, we become a buyer on a breakout or a seller on a breakout after a setup. Setup, trigger. The next thing we incorporate is the exit strategy. That exit strategy is exit first profitable opening or exit first profitable close. We also know that we need a stop loss on a long and a short, which is our follow through. So here you have all the elements that are absolutely critical and necessary in a setup, trigger, and follow through procedure. The track record for this procedure is shown right over here. In a minute, I'm going to show you the track record for a basket of Forex markets based on the same concept with different days of the week that are important to each of the Forex pairs. Now, you may ask why. One of the things that I learned from a trader a long time ago, many years ago, is mine is not to reason why mine is but to sell and buy. But if we pay attention and we understand the behavior of central banks at certain times of the year, the behavior of central banks prior to weekends, the behavior of hedge funds prior to more important announcements, the behavior of banks and hedge funds and financial management firms prior to the end of the quarter and so forth. Those patterns are true and real. These patterns exist. The behavior of grain and soybean prices, the planting season and harvest season, all of these are patterns that we know have statistical validity. Not all of them do, but we need to find the ones that, the ones that do. So let me show you an example. I have here Thursday. This is the euro versus the US dollar forex pair. And by the way, I don't just trade currencies. I trade futures. I trade stocks. I trade short term. I day trade. I trade anything that moves as long as I can do it with a good successful pattern. So this is how the pattern looks in action. This is Thursday right over here. The close is greater than the open. My buy order goes in to buy above Thursday's high on Friday. Friday we're triggered. By the end of the day, it's profitable. Exit first, profitable opening. That's what the open red arrow shows. Next Thursday, close greater than open. Buy trigger, exit first, profitable opening. This Thursday is a sell Thursday. Sell setup, no trigger the next day. No trigger equals no trade. This Thursday, close greater than open. Buy. A few days later, we had another buy uh, the next Thursday. We haven't had a profitable opening yet, but our stop hasn't been hit, so this trade would still be in process. So that's a very brief example of how this strategy worked. And I showed you the track record. So the trading model gives me the setup, the trigger, and the follow-through. That reduces the errors. It gives me an opportunity to make trades that are rule-based. Now, you can go through and you can check this out at some point in the future. But let me show you what I do. I simply take the rules and I program them, into the, program them into the computer so that I don't have judgment that's involved here. The computer generates all the trades for me. So I'm using the computer to increase my objectivity, but also to determine if my strategy over time has been successful. I took this and I applied the same concept to these Forex pairs. If you want to find out more about what I do, go to my website. I don't have anything to sell you. I don't have a, a spiel. I don't have a discount price for you at the end of the session today. Um, my intent here is simply to increase awareness of what I do in order to increase your success. If I can help you in that process, I feel I will have done my job. So I'm not going to give you a spiel or a discount stuff and all the rest of that. Just go to my website. But here, let me give you an example. This is a totally systematic, completely objective, 100% rule-based strategy 
based on these forex pairs. The Aussie Euro, the Aussie British, British Pound, the Swiss Yen, the Euro British Pound, the Euro Yen, the Euro US Dollar, the British Pound US Dollar, the US Dollar Japanese Yen. We can certainly add more into these, but the concept is the most important thing. The concept is the same as what I showed you. It's based on the day of the week. It's based on the close greater than open, close less than open. It's based on a profit lot maximizing strategy. It's based on an exit strategy and so forth. And if I take this and I apply the same concept and run it as a trading system, this is what I get. And remember, this is Forex. So what you're seeing here with 64% accuracy, which is about 80% more accuracy than most people can achieve, has generated an average of 44 pips per trade, <clears throat> holding trades on an average of about 10 days, with eight consecutive losses and 19 consecutive winners over a long period of time. I'm going to show you the graph momentarily. So this is a strategy. It's very simple, very straightforward. And there's no profit maximizing strategy here. In other words, we are simply getting out of winners when we reach our target, which is the first profitable close in this case. In a minute, I'm going to show you the difference between managing position size. And one of the things that, that uh, Joe before me said that I absolutely have huge respect for is you need to be very careful sizing your position. Because for me as well, that has been one of my big problems over the years. I try very hard not to get too big in position size because uncanny, that's when you're going to take your big loss. So I would rather trade very conservatively and use a profit maximizing strategy without increasing position size to the point where it becomes scary. So this is the, pre the track record, and this is what it looks like. So when we analyze that track record, what do we find? We find that in every case where we had a period of sideways to lower, sideways to lower, sideways to lower, sideways to lower here, sideways over here, lower over here, sideways to lower here, sideways over here, and the sideways pattern that we are in right now, that is the time to begin using this particular strategy. So people say, well, nothing's happened in 2014. Well, 2014 is just about half over. So far, we're marking time. It's a very small amount ahead. It's a very small amount behind. But the performance over the years has been very impressive. The question is, what's going to happen next? And certainly, we can't guarantee the future. But we know, at the very minimum, we're trading on rules that are completely clear. And that, to me, makes all the difference in the world. So what else do we know? We also know that we can do risk management. In the trading software that I use, which is called Genesis, uh, Genesis Navigator, I'm able to go to a particular methodology and manage position size. So when I go to what's called the fixed fractional money management methodology, I can see the difference. This red line shows the track record that I just showed you here. That is based on one forex position per trade. The track record that's shown in the blue is managing position size, saying to the computer, I want to begin with a balance of x amount of money. I want to trade no more than six con I want to trade in units of six at some point. I never want to start with more than one unit. I never want to have more than 15 in my position, in my total position size. I never want to risk more than 5% on the downside and so forth. And that gives me this performance. And you can see the very huge difference that we have between the two. So that is very dramatic difference. And that's where profit maximizing strategies come into play. My time is just about up. So I just want to review a couple of things for you before I finish up. So number one. Always ask, what do I know? What do I not know? Always, always deal with what you know. I will guarantee you, if you're dealing with what you don't know, it may be good for a while, but eventually it will come back to bite you in the you-know-what. What do you want to know? I want to know my risk. I want to know my history. I want to know my entry rules. I want to know my exit rules. I want to know my profit target. I want to know my profit maximizing strategy. I want to know timing. I've showed you a few things about timing. There are many choices and scenarios. If you don't know all of these things, you're in for a bad time. I have had many instances in which I've taken 20, 30 winning trades in a row using methodologies for which I have no 
his history, but which I'm testing, and then I give it all back on one bad trade. Maybe you've had that experience before. But I respectfully submit to you that if there's anything that I can tell you after 44, almost 50 years of trading, it's what I've explained to you today, which is the benefits of 100% rule-based trading, no interpretation. Hey, you know what? I think the Elliott Wave is a beautiful concept. It's artistic. I like the multi-chambered Nautilus. I like the fact that the numbers are very cool. But if I take 10 Elliott Wave analysts and show them the same chart and ask them to give me conclusions, I will get six or seven different interpretations that doesn't work for me, as I said before. So what can I do for you? If you're already a great trader, I can't help you, but we could share some experiences. If you're a good trader, I can help you get even better. If you're a bad trader, there's no doubt I can help you immensely. If you're new or struggling, I can help you shorten the learning curve or help you out of your slump. Visit my website, see what I do. You may have an interest in it. Know this, I'm a real trader. I'm not a theoretical trader. I teach what I do, and what I do is based on statistics, is based on reality, 100% rule-based trading. I do not have time for questions. I don't want to overstay my welcome here, but I will say this. If you have questions, send me an email. I try to answer all my emails as quickly as possible. If you have a constructive email with a specific question, I will answer that as quickly as I can. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity, and I hope to do this again. Take care now.